Hello YouTube. Today we're going to be discussing fake muscle and how to spot it on someone. And by fake muscle, I don't mean steroids or syntho. I know that normies believe that if you take steroids, you grow fake muscle. That makes no sense. You take an anabolic substance that boosts the production of certain types of fibers, and in this case, it's muscle fibers. Yes, it goes away when you're off the product, but it's real muscle. Syntho is a bit different. It's an oil you inject in the muscle to lift it up or to make it look bigger. It has to be drained at some point, so it's also fake. But I'm not really interested in these two things. What I want to talk about today is a new plague that is extremely visible, especially on Instagram. And that is muscle implants that tend to be permanent and that actually look like the real thing. It's not that easy to spot them. With Syntho, the muscle looks blurry, it looks bulbous, so it's easier. But because surgery is advancing and progressing at a crazy rate, the implants that are done nowadays look almost real. They look very close to nature. So I think it's important to be able to distinguish between the real deal and the bullshit because, as we all know, if someone is going to have implants, they might not be the best source of information for you because they failed to build muscles themselves. So when we talk about this new type of procedures, the most common implants you will see in the fitness industry are going to be abs implants, ass implants, and chest implants. I'm mostly for this video going to focus on the more disgusting social networks like Instagram, for example, that are focused entirely on the visual because you usually post pictures of yourself or very short videos. And so it's important to look good immediately, which also means that we're not going to talk about pro bodybuilders. This is not the point of the video. Also, because implants are not that common in pro bodybuilding, meaning that in the past, there have been some suspicions about some pros using implants. Like, for example, the OGs know that Arnold was suspected of having calf implants. Now, I personally don't believe that because the people who spread these rumors were not very trustworthy. But it's interesting to know that it's a possibility. You can get calf implants. And at this point, you can get implants for pretty much any body part that you want. Pro bodybuilders tend to stay away from implants because implants don't have striations, implants are tough to flex, and are visible on stage because they look completely out of place. So usually what they will do is they will inject things in the muscle to inflame it and make it look bigger, or they will straight up use syntho, that is much more common. But for now, this is not the focus, because the main culprit, as I said, are the beach muscles that most men obsess over. A six-pack is a big one. Every guy wants a six-pack. And so surgery adapted to give people what they want without having to actually put in the work. And since surgery has to be sold one way or the other, you're going to have people who are going to serve as des hommes sandwich, as we say in French, meaning people who are going to advertise the practice, whether they are upfront about it or not. And if we're going to discuss uh, and talk about a guy that, in my opinion, represents that on Instagram in particular, I think that we cannot go wrong with Liver King. There's been a lot of accusations of Liver King having implants for his abs in particular. And so I thought that I would use him as an example because he is typically the type of person that is running a business focused on men. He targets men and masculinity. And so there is no surprise that his upper body is much bigger than his lower body. He has very small legs compared to his abs and his chest in particular, which I personally believe to potentially be implants. So why would Liver King get these implants? Well, it's very simple. If you're going to sell supplements and a way of life to be anabolic and to be big, you have to be big. If he were small, you would not take his advice. And since most people think that a six pack and a big chest are signs that someone knows what they're talking about, it would be a very interesting and smart business choice for him to actually go with it. So what would be the signs that Liver King has ab implants? Well, the first thing that is uh, quite striking with implants for the abs in particular is that they tend to bulge but not just a bit my abs bulge from the side they look like rows but it's not that striking whereas with ab implants you can feel a finger in between the abs it's that obvious they really look like they're trying to escape the skin almost and that is because they're placed just below the skin the way the implant is done if you get ab implants is they make a, a small incision on the side of the ab 
and they slide the implant on top of the musculature of the ab. So of course it's going to look like it's protruded. Then on top of that you also have surgeons who go in and they remove the fat in between the abs which gives it this even more 3D appearance. It's uh, striking with people like Cleaver King because he has a bubble gut. From the side he has a belly but he has abs on the belly. That is usually a sign that there's something strange going on here. Now, we could point that out to him just being on PEDs, it's a possibility, but it's still strange because it's not just that they always look the same year in, year out, it's also that regardless of what he's doing, they look the same. That's another dead giveaway with implants, they don't look natural and they don't move naturally. Just because they're placed on the muscle does not mean that they have the function of the muscle. So, for example, if you look at my abs, as I speak, as I move around, you see them expand, retract, shrink, stretch, you see them, see them more defined sometimes, they go with the motion because they serve the function that they have, which is they surround my organs and they play the role of keeping the spine straight and moving everything that needs to be moved in this area. Then is also, there's also the bolted on look. The bolted on look is something that you see with boob implants in particular, because for a woman who is flat chested, when she gets boob implants, she doesn't have the frame for that, because if, if she had the frame, she would have big boobs, naturally. So what ends up happening is that the boob looks like just put there and bolted on, right? There's nothing around it. It looks very strange. It's the same with the abs. It looks like someone went and did boop, 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 like they're each individually implanted, but it, it looks completely strange and out of place. We're going to get back to that point because it's not that visible with liver king for reasons I'm going to explain later, but that is also something that is a sign that someone has potentially implants in their abdominal wall. The big issue in this case is that just because you have visible abs via implants doesn't mean that you have the benefits that come with the abs. You know, a bodybuilder like me is going to build abs because it looks good, but I also get the benefits of having abs, which is I'm healthier because I have a lower body fat percentage, and I also am stronger because I have a strong core. It's not a super strong core, but it's much stronger than the average person. The stupidity of implants is that you get none of these things, and so you end up with someone like Liver King that in his situation is not that strong for his size. The overhead press, for example, there was the Liver King challenge going on. I saw videos of him pressing 200 pounds with fake plates. The guy stacked a ton of Olympic plates on the bar, CrossFit plates that could very well be one pound or five pounds, and he could just tell people they're 20 or 40 pounds. I think that's a sign. When you're that weak, it means that you have a weak core because you cannot press overhead anything that is remotely impressive. And yet the guy has a crazy six pack. This could also be a dead giveaway. If you want to see what a strong core produces without the body fat percentages, I would like to point out Eddie Hall. When he was fat, he had a six pack. Granted, it wasn't very visible, but when he cut down, his six pack looked ridiculous because he had a very, very strong core. That is what an actual six pack of someone who is a crazy strong athlete would look like. It wouldn't look like Liver King at all. So when you end up with abs that are uncorrelated with your actual strength or core stability, this tends to be a sign that they are fake. Now, the problem I have with Liver King is that I cannot certify 100% he has ab implants because he's on drugs. And because he's on drugs, his entire body is big. So it's tougher to say for a fact that he has implants. This is why I am going to bring in a second actor, someone who is somehow managing to be even dumber than Liver King, and that is a man known as David Michigan. David Michigan is French, and I nickname him personally the French Liver King because I'm going to put pictures. He just he looks like him. You know, it's interesting to see that every single dude that wants to tap into the masculinity market looks the same. They all have beards. They all, for the most part, try to push the muscularity thing as much as possible. They all smoke cigars. They surround themselves with bikini chicks. At some point, I wonder if men are going to wake up one day and realize that we're being taken for idiots and that the people who sell us useless products to make millions are just manipulating our most primitive instincts to be able to get into our wallets. I know that I woke up from that dream years ago, but for some reason, millions, millions, tens of millions of my brothers are still stuck following that type of, of complete schmuck. So, 
this guy, the French liver king in particular, is a great example because he's not on PEDs. Or if he is, he is so pathetic that he manages to be small and on drugs. And the problem is that he has abin pants and I would sell my house and put that on the bed because it is so clearly visible with him since he has no size around it. And because he has no size around it, you can clearly see that there is a problem. When I told you, talked to you about the bolted on visual, that's exactly what I was talking about. His abs just look bolted on. They look completely out of place. On top of that, because he is fat, he has a ton of visceral fat, you can also see that they don't belong here because he has crazy big love handles, a ton of fat in his lower abs, and then those four abs that pop out out of nowhere with no fat at all. This is someone that got a liposuction and then an ab implant surgery procedure and now looks completely ridiculous without Photoshop. So this is what fake abs actually look like. Look at this guy. This is what you can expect of someone who is lying to you and who never actually had to work for their abs. And this is truly the stupidity of implants. Because regardless of if you get them or not, if you just get fat on top of it, you'll look like the guy. You look completely idiotic. On top of that, as I said, you're supposed to want a six pack because it shows that you have very little visceral fat, meaning you're not going to die of a heart attack in your 50s and you are healthy. You have a strong core. When you just go through and get ab implants, that doesn't solve that issue. You are still fat, you are still unhealthy. So that is truly also the sign that pe people who do get ab implants don't have their priorities straight and tend to fall for the vanity trap. A lot of people say that bodybuilding is, uh, is a vanity pursuit, it's a beauty pageant. I disagree with that because the practice that you have to go through if you're natural is anything but that. It's hard work, it teaches you, teaches you values, sacrifice, discipline, all things that are very important in life. And then after that, because you're natural, you also have boosted health. So all of that works perfectly. But implants are like PEDs. They solve absolutely no problem. You are less healthy than you were when you got them. And now you have just the visual, but not the internal. The internal that in bodybuilding is the most important. And of course, plastic surgeons everywhere have perfectly understood that. They understand that most people have no inner values. Most men have absolutely no idea of what masculinity is. So they just see masculinity as a set of external qualities like having a beard, having money, fucking chicks. These are surface level. That's 0.1% of being a man, but that's most of what modern society focuses on. And surgeons know, just like Liver King knows, that if they sell you these attributes and try to tell you that you can be just like them, this means that they are going to be able to make a lot of money off of you. A set of abin plants, for example, goes for around ten hundred dollars. Uh, ten hundred, ten hundred. Is that even a thing? Ten thousand. Thank you for your poor English and H. Immigration is on its way. Ten thousand dollars in New York City. So you see, it's not that expensive. And you can bet your eyes that in other countries like Brazil, it's even cheaper. The problem is that. Because I did the work properly, I went on these websites. All of the pictures of the people, the men who got ab implants, the before and after, were men who never trained a day in their life. Or skinny fat dudes who never did an ab exercise, never dieted and ate Burger King, woke up one day and said, hmm, I want abs, but I don't want to have to put any effort. And the surgeons came in and said, you know what? I have just the thing for you. Give me 10K and I'll make it happen. And boom, voila, you have a six pack that you did not earn and therefore looks completely idiotic. But it doesn't look bad. That's the worst part about it. You know, surgery progresses so fast that now it looks half decent. Meaning that these six packs look like actual six packs. Someone like me and you now can spot them, but the average person can't. The average chick will not be able to tell it's a fake six pack. And so most men that don't want again to have to sacrifice for their six pack are just going to go for that because people always take the path of least resistance. This is why I said this is a plague. It starts with the influencers, but surely enough and soonly enough, it makes its way down to the general population. And now we have a ton of idiots who are going to go for these ab implants. People who have never trained a day in their life and will also never benefit from, that, from natural lifting. See, this is my issue with this. This is why it pisses me off and I wanted to make this video. You want a six pack. 
If implants don't exist, you have to work for it now. And as you work for it, you discover the inner value of lifting and you gain much more than just a stupid six pack. This is nothing. What I learned building this is what matters. But if implants come in, they rob you of the work because they replace the work. They come before the work even took place and now you're actually never going to taste the satisfaction that is lifting weights. How much of a satisfa satisfaction do you think a guy gets when they just wake up in an hospital bed with a six-pack implants? There's no satisfaction in this because anything that money can buy will never satisfy you. It's metabolism. It's the endless consuming of things, of useless items that will never fall the void in your heart. Whereas hard work and the pursuit of a passion and the accomplishment of something that you know is difficult, that would fulfill you. But plastic surgery is getting in the way of that. And it also gets in the way of people fixing their shitty lifestyles. All of these failures I saw in the pictures, you think they're going to fix their bad habit after they get their six pack? No, they'll eat even more because now they have a six pack and they will die even sooner with even worse health. Does that remind you of something? Yes, PEDs. Implants are just like PEDs. It's the same with drugs and anabolic, anabolic steroids. The guy, instead of fixing their diet and working harder for longer, just jump on drugs, eat even worse shit, train even less, and end up with better physiques. So why would they have to actually fix anything else? The substance, the implant, is doing the work for them. Now, I blame these people because they are lazy and they again go for the path of least resistance, but I mostly also blame the surgeons because they know exactly what they're doing. Just like the people who push PDs know what they're doing, they know that the product they sell is addicting and psychologically it is irresistible to the weak-minded. On top of that, surgeons know the stats and they know that their clients, their patients, have a very high returning rate. Most no one does one surgery. Stats show that if you get one surgery, you are very likely to get a second one, then a third one, then a fourth one, etc., etc. Why? You'll never get satisfied. If you were lifting, it would be fine. You lift, you're never satisfied. So you'll lift naturally for the rest of your life. I'm in that boat. But if you get implants, now you're just a cash cow for the surgeon because you'll pay more and more and more to have body modifications and it will never actually end because, as I said, it's not the modifications you're after. You're after the satisfaction of accomplishment that these modifications will never actually get you. You were never in it for the aesthetics. You were in it for the spiritual. But because these people don't actually realize that, they just go for more and more surgeries. On top of that, implants need to be replaced every 10 years or so. I know that some people think they're permanent. They're not. They might be permanent if you want them to look horrible. And regardless, they will look horrible because you cannot age into implants. Just look at the chicks that get breast implants in their 40s. Look at them in their 50s, 60s. They look like mummies. They look like horror movies. Because plastic surgery is a fucking scam. And it's really sad to see that it's starting to impact men. I understood why it impacted women. Women sadly have... They're hostages of their own beauty. If you're not beautiful as a woman, you are nothing. Society tells you you are nothing. And as you age, your beauty naturally fades. And some women can't fucking take it. So they do more and more plastic surgery to stay young. And this is how the system functions. It feeds women insecurities until they crack and they go for plastic surgery. But now the system that always aims to make more and more money has turned its side towards men. And they're doing it to you via influencers. By telling you you're not good enough, you're not enough of a man, and if you want to be more of a man, you have to look like them. But the methods they sell will never get you to look like them, so what you'll do instead is you will resort to surgery and you will have lost everything. Because you will end up dependent on surgery, just like you would end up dependent on PEDs. Whereas lifting would have set you free. Lifting would have liberated you because you would have become the master of your own ship instead of the slave that is in the ship being directly transported wherever. In this case, it is to your tomb. Now, let's talk about the very juicy topic of butt implants because for now we only spoke about ab implants and men. I want to tackle the topic of butt implants because I think it's very interesting since it's the exact same vein but even worse. First off, how does one spot butt implants? Well, I have a very funny story to share with you guys. 
back when I used to go to commercial gyms, uh, there was a, sp a specific chick I had my eye on because just like any guy that goes to gym, I had a list of the most beautiful chicks in my head. And every time one of them passed through the door, I knew exactly where she was. And if she was going to the squat rack, I was going to take a peek. And this girl in particular was very cute. She was a cute blonde. And uh, she was perfectly fine. She had a nice body. And I remember one day seeing her come through with the fattest ass I've ever seen in my life that looked completely ridiculous on her frame and I immediately knew what happened. She got butt implants. And I knew her pretty much, so I spoke to her and she told me that she went to Brazil. She didn't tell me she got the surgery, but I immediately assumed that that's what it was. And it was heartbreaking in truth to see a perfectly beautiful person turn into a weird, ugly, golem creature in the span of a knife cut because, again, she was feeling bad about herself, I guess. She was feeling self-conscious about her small ass. I blame the media for this. I don't know why this big butt craze is so strongly and going so rampant nowadays. It's out of hands. Like, if everyone likes a fat ass, but there is a limit. And butt implants are the limit. Butt implants look absolutely ridiculous, and this is how you spot them. I remember seeing her doing squats and thinking to myself that her ass was going to burst because I could see the implants as she squatted. I could see the shape of the implant as she squatted. It looked like the movie The Thing. When the thing uh, takes someone's form and you reveal it for what it is, the, the physical body bursts. I was expecting the thing to burst out of her ass. I blame her boyfriend because she was dating some bro who only did upper body. If she had had taste, she would have dated a powerlifter and he would have put her on a daily diet of squats, oats and milk and she would have built a fat ass without having to resort to implants. This is why, ladies, you never date bodybuilders. He says as a bodybuilder himself. Now, uh, the beyond this very interesting story that I know have you revealed to your seat right now, the other dead giveaway of butt implants is the fact that the strength of the possessor of said implants is in constant is in direct contradiction with the size of their posterior chain. So, usually, if you have a big ass and you have cake, you're strong. On squats, on pulls, you're strong. A, a girl with a big ass usually can squat two plates, no problem. If she struggles to squat one plate, that's a sign that this is not muscles because, should go without saying, but implants are not muscles. They don't replace muscle. Muscle is very strong fibers that serve a function. They move the body through space. Implants are just sitting there. They do nothing. This is why they're vanities because they're not functional. And by functional, I don't mean the ability to do pull-ups. I mean the ability to just move like a human. If you bodybuild and you do squats, you have a fat ass that's functional muscle because you can do things with it beyond just squats. Implants don't serve that function. And another thing that I've remarked with them and also, in my opinion, makes them completely useless is the fact that they are in opposition with the rest of the leg. So the issue with butt implants in particular is that as opposed to something like ab implants, abs are just sitting there, they don't reconnect with other muscles, the butt connects directly to the armstring and to the quad also on the other side of the leg. So if you see a chick with a massive ass and then no legs, like those tiny bird legs, those are butt implants because that's not how the body works. You cannot just isolate the glutes and get no leg work. Most glute exercises are going to train the quads and the armstrings. So you'll get both. And this is how, as a woman, you get a beautiful posture chain. Everything is developed equally, not just the ass. You look ridiculous with just the ass. But something that many women who get these ass implants don't know is that they tend to interfere with muscular development, meaning that once you get the, ab, the ass implant, there is a strong possibility that the leg is going to atrophy, meaning that you end up looking ridiculous. Case in point, for those of you who have the, uh, the uh, unfortunate uh, ability to connect to a television, Kim Kardashian, someone who has had many surgeries for her ass, and who now looks like an actual monster because he, she has tiny legs and she has a massive ass. It makes absolutely no sense. I don't know who finds this attractive. Certainly not me. And yet women keep getting these surgeries. Why? It's because they're very cheap. But implants are 5k in the US. In Brazil, it's 2k. And if you go to a shady clinic, it's even lower than that. So, of course, with all of these magazines, all of these influencers pushing this idea 
a ton more chicks actually fall for it and that is a tragedy because just like with abs there is a price to pay when you get these surgeries as i said the issue is that they prevent muscular development and that has consequences since as you age you want a strong posterior chain a strong posterior chain prevents hip injuries that are extremely common in older women. It also prevents back injuries because the entire lower body is strong. Whereas the implants, who in, in a sense take the place of the muscle, they don't replace the muscle, but psychologically they do because why would you need to train your ass? Your ass is already massive. Creates a, creates a reaction where the entirety of the posterior chain is going to get weaker and weaker and weaker. And when you consider how easy it truly is to build big a big ass as a woman, it's an absolute travesty. And you realize that this entire business is built off of the laziness and the ignorance of people. Take any woman, make her do squats and deadlifts and movements for the glutes, put her on a caloric increase and she will get a fat ass. There is absolutely no exception. Yes, some women are more gifted in that area because they have a better fat distribution. But if you are a woman... You have two X chromosomes and you have a ton of female hormones in your body. You are designed to have a big ass and to store fat in this area. So the existence of butt implants is an actual replacement of femininity and of hard work in the gym. And that is something I don't stand for. It's the exact same thing with a six pack. You're a man, you have anabolic hormones in your body. You have the ability to have a six pack. You don't have an excuse. Implants are just a replacement for the weak minded who refuse to actually do the work. And I also think, this is my personal pet theory, that it's also a sign of mental illness. In my opinion, if you get plastic surgery, you're mentally ill. There is something in you that you should have fixed at some point, a complex, a part of your body you don't like, but instead of facing it like a man or a woman and actually doing the work to fix it, you took the easy way out. And this is why you are going to make this mental illness worse and worse and worse. The implant does not fix the, fix the mental illness. I guarantee you that if I could track down that blonde chick, she most likely has gotten more surgeries. I'm certain she would have gotten something like a, a boob job or she would have gotten like those lip injections that make women look like duck and completely ridiculous. Why? It's because it's a spiral of, of deteriorating mental health that is promoted by those surgeries the surgeon that then is going to promote more of their surgeries to get more and more of your money, even though it's going to end up killing you at the end of the day. And case in point, I have a perfect example for that in the fitness industry, and that is Rich Piana. For those of you who know, I love Rich with all my heart, but the guy was a complete fuck up. And it is something that I personally believe that he was one of the most implanted fitness YouTuber at the time. He had chest implants, he had arm implants and he also had abs implants. All of this is fairly visible once you actually focus on it. These were not muscles, these were fake. They did not move properly and it's only natural. The guy had a very advanced case of body dysmorphia. I think that most people who resort to implants show symptoms of body dysmorphia. It's only natural. You need to be completely fucked in the head to go get surgery to get foreign bodies implanted in your body just to look better that is really weird i understand working to get something but the second it involves a knife and the implantation of something foreign in you like this you need to be a bit unhinged and the issue is that i'm seeing more and more people go down that path a path that is again promoted by influencers now are they all unhinged i don't know maybe not but I know that whether they like, to, they like to believe it or not, they are helping to promote that mindset. For them, it's just a way to purchase social proof. Because of course, when you're going to try and exist in this social sphere, in, on social media for fitness in particular, you're going to want to be attractive. And what is attractive on social fitness, it is going to be muscle because we all tend to gravitate towards the bigger people. That's especially true with noobs. Noobs judge a book by their cover. They're going to look at the biggest person and they're going to take advice from that guy because clearly he knows what he's talking about. That completely, of course, ignores the existence of PEDs, of steroids and of implants. But these people uh, know that this is how the average noob functions and therefore this is what they do. They will do whatever it takes to get a nice body even if it means looking like Frankenstein's creature. I also reminisce on a quote that I heard a lot and I liked to think about because it made me feel better. 
and I've gotten to a point in my lifting journey where I realized it was a complete lie. It's the quote that goes, you can buy anything in this world, but the one thing you can't buy is a nice body. That's bullshit. I don't know who said it first, but that person was a liar, because you can buy a nice body. You can purchase hormones at a TRT clinic that are going to give you a nice body with no work. And you can now purchase implants that quite literally replace the necessity to even have a body. I would encourage you to, if you are a man, look into more internal masculine values when you look for role models. Don't just stop at the abs or the chest. Look at what these people actually carry. Look at their spirituality. What are their intrinsic beliefs? This is what actually matters. Same for women. I know I have like 2% chicks on this channel. Don't take advice from the girl who sells makeup and leggings and is going to teach you how to tone your booty. That chick is a demon. She's not there to help you. She's, she's there to help herself. That's most influencers. You should be looking out for yourself first and foremost because this is a fucking jungle and people with ab implants who eat raw meat 15 times a day want your money. They want your money bad and they're willing to actually completely destroy their own body to be able to get it. The issue is that it might lead you to destroy your own body and this is when I am simply not going to let that happen. Any idiot with a six pack at this point can become a guru so it truly really is up to you to be able to distinguish between real muscle plastic muscle and most importantly real minds and plastic minds because keep in mind that if someone is something that i said to open up the video needs to resort to that type of practice to be able to look good what type of advice do you think they can offer you what type of value do you think they can add to your life do you think that these people can teach you how to be a better man how to be a better person how to be more disciplined, how to train your body, most likely they can't. But what they can do, however, is they can push their products like motherfuckers to become more rich at your detriment. So, because you are the consumer in this entire thing, you are the person who is in the best position to defend yourself. And I hope that with the information I gave you in this video, you have everything you need to know to be able to not turn into another fool. Thank you for watching. Have a good night.